Hey guys, welcome back to another CO Guy Stuff. Today we're making one of my favorite dishes. I don't make it that often, but I absolutely love it. It's incredibly popular worldwide, except for the United States for some reason. I don't know why Indian cuisine isn't super popular here like it is elsewhere, but this is one of the signature Indian dishes. We're gonna do it in a crock pot, and it's absolutely delicious packed full of flavor. You can make it super spicy. You can make it not so spicy anywhere in between. We're going to go for kind of in between right now. It's healthy and really depends on what you do with it. In and of itself, it's really healthy and lean. I'm going to put it on a long grain jasmine rice. You can put it on whatever you want, short grain, brown rice, quinoa, you know, whatever you want. But it doesn't use that fancy of ingredients. There's only one We'll start with this, the Gram Masala. This is found in the spice section of your grocery store. And it really depends on your area how common it's going to be. My Walmarts used to carry it. For whatever reason, they went to online only. Now I can only find it in one chain around here. And yes, you could make it yourself given its ingredients, but you're gonna spend a heck of a lot more buying all the different raw ingredients and then blending it. And you don't use all that much. I can probably make about 20 gallons of chicken tiki masala using this one little jar so don't go too crazy it's only a few bucks other than that we have some basic spices some cumin some coriander ground not whole seeds and of course we're going to be using a lot of curry powder those are the primary spices the gram masala has a bunch in it these are pretty much just for supplement other than that we've got a small container of tomato paste we're going to be using a little bit of lemon juice couple cans of coconut milk, one large container of regular plain yogurt, don't use a Greek, some cayenne and red pepper flakes for heat. Don't go super crazy if you're going to use the cayenne. This is to add heat, not flavor. If you add too much of this, it really does change the flavor of the dish. This is not a Mexican dish. If you want even more heat, I would suggest putting in whole red peppers. Just chop them up real fine. We're going to put in three whole white onions, a generous helping of ginger that I'm going to finely grate, some cilantro just for final presentation on the dish, and some minced garlic. Either do it fresh or I really like these jars of minced garlic. Now to make the sauce and chop all the veggies and everything, if you have a food processor, use that. If not, you can use a blender and I'm going to show you the trick on how to do it easily and without making a huge mess. And like all my other dishes, this makes a ton of servings or a ton of leftovers. Feel free to cut everything in half or a third, depending on how much you want to make. This is probably gonna be making about, I would say a healthy 12 meals, what you see here. And all of this, even if you have to buy all the spices, you're only out about 50 bucks. Let's get started. All right, now these are going to reduce down. Again, if you have to do it in batches, go ahead and do that. If you have a food processor, put in as much of this as you can, but it, you might have to cut it in half. Now we're going to put in our spices. We've got about three quarters cup of curry powder. We have a tablespoon each of the coriander and cumin and three tablespoons of the garam masala. This is our cilantro. That's going to go off to the side for later on. Just stick it in the fridge for now. And finally chop up or grate. It's a lot easier to chop up your ginger. This is going to go in our sauce. Now to start liquefying this, we're going to add one can of the coconut milk. And I'll show you the trick so we don't make a huge mess if you're using a blender. Okay, here we go. Put in your one can of coconut milk. Usually the second will not fit and that's okay. We can incorporate that afterwards. We're gonna make sure that all the chunky stuff gets broken down and then that'll mix with whatever's left afterwards. A couple tablespoons worth of lemon juice. Our spice mixtures, including the curry. You can, like I said, there's a million ways to do this. You can use curry paste also. That's just another thing that's pretty hard to find, for me at least, around here. All right, now, for the heat, I did two tablespoons of cayenne, that's on the bottom, 
four of the crushed red pepper. The, the red pepper is really safe to add to this as far as not changing the flavor, just adding some nice heat. And this puts it right about in the middle. Now, if you do reheat this, like I said, you're gonna probably have to add some more fresh. I would go with a little sprinkle of cayenne because it will completely lose its heat once it's been refrigerated and reheated. I've got about four garlic cloves worth and a good two tablespoons of salt. In it goes. As soon as we start to get this liquefying, we're gonna go ahead and put in our tomato paste. Now, the trick to this is that you only pulse it a half second at a time, maximum, because what you don't want is a vortex and a tornado of crap pushing that top off. So if you have a pulse mode, put it on, and you're just gonna be literally pulsing it. If you see it start to form that vortex, you're going too far. And we do want to make this really smooth and creamy, and it'll it'll get down there, believe me. So go ahead and pulse it. It's probably gonna take 20 or 30 times, depending on your blender. All right, so that took about 10 times, and now we're nice and liquid, and we've made some more room. Let's go ahead and put in the tomato paste. And as much of the yogurt as you could possibly fit. The more you get in now, the easier it is to incorporate the yogurt. Now I'm gonna pour half of it into this bowl, because I wanna get that ginger in there too, and the rest of the coconut milk going. We're just gonna make some space here. In goes the ginger, rest of the yogurt, if you've got any left in there. And that's really it for the prep. Now we have to just cube our chicken up and it all goes in the crock pot, super easy. Chicken's cube, put it in the crock pot, pour in your gravy. Now major alterations to this one is using a lot more tomato paste or diced tomatoes, and you'll see it with a, a lot redder sauce. And another is to make it pretty sweet and use a good amount of sugar in it, almost like a barbecue sauce. I prefer it more on the just street curry and spicy side, and you get this uh, orangish mustard kind of colored sauce, but it's all personal preference, and it will get a little bit redder as it cooks down. A lot of the whiteness in there right now is the onion that's all mixed in, and those will melt away and disappear. Uh, you could also put in a little bit of paprika. Try it with it and without. I tend to prefer it without, but a lot of people will definitely put paprika in. All right, uh, low seven hours, and come back and we'll see if it's thick enough. Oh man, does the house smell good. Seven hours is up. Now we're just gonna thicken up the sauce and it'll be ready to go. We're gonna kick the crock pot down to warm. And all you do is dissolve a couple tablespoons of cornstarch in with a little bit of water and then put that in. And just let that sit, stir it in and let it heat up for about another 10 minutes. And that'll bring us to a real nice consistency of a thick curry. And there we go, guys. Super easy, delicious, healthy. If you've never had Indian cuisine, this is the dish that you wanna start out with. Everybody is gonna love this. If they are a fan of curry for sure, if you've never had a curry dish, this is one that's not gonna be off-putting to most people. It's not super spicy, but it ticks all the boxes. Now, I'm not gonna say this is as good as a really good restaurant or some authentic home-cooked meal, but oh my God, is it good? That's it. See you guys next time.